It's back there. Hi, and welcome to my new home studio space. My name is Emily, and I'm a printmaker, illustrator, painter, and author living in Nashville, Tennessee. In today's video, I'm going to show you around my new space and talk about all the ways I make my art studio a joyful place. I got my first real studio space 20 years ago when I was a student at the University of Kentucky in an old tobacco warehouse turned fine arts building. It was a long, narrow room on the top floor with a large window at the end and a little area rug spread out in the corner with some big pillows. It was at that studio that I learned the power of carving out somewhere special to make my magic happen. I found joy there, a real deep joy that sparked like a flint when my brush hit the canvas. Any place where you make art can be made sacred. And what is sacred is highly subjective, different for every person. For me, it's a place where my soul can be naked, where I can lay down any armor and give myself over joyfully to the creative process without fear. One of the easiest ways to inject joy into your creative space is to surround yourself with what inspires you. Simple as that. For me, that includes the art of artists like Ken Ambler, Kathleen Neely, Rebecca Green, and Afton Shaw. Similarly, I like to keep a chorus of family photos on display. This quilt block painting was a wedding gift from my friend Kelly. And this is the crown jewel of my art collection, a lino cut print made by my mother when she was in high school. Fresh cut flowers bring a splash of color and life to my desk. Little clumps of collected treasures are like bookmarks for my brain. The print I bought in Vancouver with my dad, pottery made by my aunt in New Mexico, and the vase I picked up shopping with my best friend. I sit here like a great dragon on her treasure hoard, though a thief likely wouldn't find too much of value here. Part of what I love about being an artist is that I can make my world however I want it. Boil together an idea, some printing tools, and a sewing machine, and I have a cute apron that didn't exist before. It's a very practical magic. This work table was made from warehouse shelving that was headed for the dumpster. Secondhand workspaces that are already beat up and old mean that you don't really have to worry too much about being tidy but that doesn't mean that they can't also be special. I love this table. It's heavy and sturdy and doesn't shake as I work, and it's just what I need. But it wasn't very pretty, so I'm giving it a little upgrade with some paint and flowery folk art-inspired vines. I like to exist at the intersection of whimsical and practical. And in dreaming about what my ideal home would look like in the future, my driving aesthetic really boils down to bag end. My goal is a hobbit hole. And I think if Bilbo had a workshop, his tables maybe might look something like this. Probably a little cooler, but we work with what we have, right? There, that's better. A little bit of whimsy goes a long way. I've organized all my materials so that they're right within reach when I need them. 
and the things I need all the time are permanently attached, like my inking plate. I keep my inking materials on this shelf. My inks are organized by color and my brayers in various stages of cleanliness hang below. My Richeson medium etching press is just one step to the right. And David helped me install this pulley rack so I can hang my prints to dry. Next to my desk is more material storage for a bunch of different odds and ends. In this basket, I keep my planner. It's called the Maker's Yearbook, and it's really awesome. I'll link it in the description box. I am not ashamed to admit that I am still very sticker motivated. Also close at hand is my little bestie. I keep some filming and lighting equipment down here. I try to stock up on materials when I'm flush and things are on sale, and I got all of these canvases for a great deal. I keep my markers, colored pencils, gouache, and gold leaf in these great art bin containers. Now I am very excited about this new addition, my drafting easel. I found it at a thrift shop for 30 bucks and all it needed was a wipe down and a new wing nut. I keep a basket of prepared canvases ready to go. Underneath the easel is a little bit of a storage area and in it I keep a basket with sanding blocks and paint. When I first laid eyes on this built-in, I knew I wanted to create an altar space. This is an ever-evolving art installation that is dedicated to the work that is closest to my heart, my novel. These items belong to my characters. If you're interested in reading more on altar spaces, I really recommend this book. And speaking of books, here's my library again. I feel like I can justify being a little extra for the sake of joy. Like, I hate these Clorox wipe labels so much, so I'm making a sock to hide them. Is it dumb? Yes. Could I just peel off the label? Also, yes. But whatever, I like it. I have anxiety and depression, so it helps me to post encouraging messages around my space. And it also helps me to have beautiful plants to take care of. Well, I hope you enjoyed visiting my new art studio. Please like and subscribe, and I'm going to leave you with a quote from Joseph Campbell from his book, The Power of Myth. You must have a room, or a certain hour or so a day, where you don't know what was in the newspapers that morning. You don't know who your friends are. You don't know what you owe anybody. And you don't know what anybody owes to you. 
This is a place where you can simply experience and bring forth what you are and what you might be. This is the place of creative incubation. At first you may find that nothing happens there, but if you have a sacred place and use it, something will eventually happen. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.